So talk to us about what a typical tour is like. Now, I know you have a tour that basically is centered in Florence and pretty much stays there. Right. The, the joy of that is you only unpack once. That's right. Right. And then you have another tour that you actually go on, on, on the train. The fourth tour you're talking about is called The Taste of Tuscany. And that one does center on Florence, but there's day trips to Siena and Pisa and San Gimignano. That's one with all the towers. And they go out to an agriturismo farm where they um, grow their own wine and they have a fabulous lunch. Um, but that one focuses a lot on food and wine in Tuscany, and it includes two days of actual hands-on cooking classes with this really handsome Italian chef who speaks mm -hmm. English. And um, in, it's in this gorgeous villa right outside the city that we take them to. Um, and that one does stay just in Florence, so they really get a feeling of what the city's like. And, of course, we see all the art in the museums and the gardens, too. Mm -hmm. And then we have another tour that does travel that st starts in Florence and does some of the same day trips. And then we go to Venice, which is my most heartfelt city. And we do they go to Murano to see where glass is made. And then we go back to Florence, which is really a treat for them because when they get back, we stay at the same hotel and they really have a feel. They know just where they want to go. And they can do their shopping then at the end so they don't have to travel with it. Oh, fabulous. I know, it's fun. Yeah. So I, I want to go. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> so how do people figure out how they can catch up with you and... I mean, as far as putting a group together, or do, is, do, can you just be one person wanting to join a group of seven other people, or is it you come in, in like, on the arc in terms <laughs> of two by two by two? Well, people come both ways. Um, the price is, the basic price is built on double occupancy, so most people bring a friend. But I always have one or two single women, and there is a single supplement for that, but they get their own private room, and they still get all the same kind of um, attention and everything. And they always make friends on the trip, but um, we don't match people up. It's too much, it's too difficult when you're on it 24-7 with someone. So we, um, but people come um, in all kinds of ways, and threesomes, twosomes, all kinds of things. Fabulous. And how, we, what we haven't touched on here is how long do you typically stay when you're over there? Oh, uh, we stay for two weeks. All our tours right now are two weeks. Mm -hmm. It's a long way to go for less than that. So tell me a little bit more about these cooking classes that are part of the, the, tour, the, the um, tour that goes to Florence. Oh, it's in this great big... Um, Renaissance kitchen, so it's huge stone kitchen with great big farm tables and state-of-the-art um, stoves. And when we did it last time, we learned to make four different antipasta, including little crostini with, with tomato, one with um, fegatini, that's a, a liver pate, and vegetables. We sautéed, we, not sautéed, we fried sage leaves and had crunchy sage leaves. We made our own um, pasta, mezzaluna, half-moon raviolis. We made chicken with um, grapes, a specialty oh of the goodness. region, and two desserts. It was just great fun. And some of the people who were there really wanted to do everything, and they got to try and make everything. They got to cook at the stove. And some wanted to do some and sit and have a glass of wine and watch for parts. So it's really open to as much as you want to take part. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So let me ask you, do you have a favorite city in Italy? Well, you know, it's something that Italians are always asking me, and here's what I tell them. I say, Amo Firenze con la mia testa e la mia cuore, ma adoro Venezia con la mia tutta anima. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fabulous. <laughs> I'll bet you charm the socks off of them. <laughs> Sure, in English, that means I love Florence with my head and my heart, but Venice I adore with my very soul. Ah, fabulous. So what's to adore with your very soul, soul about Venice? Venice is, of course, a unique city. There's no traffic whatsoever there. It's all on water and um, bridges. It's a lot of little islands connected by bridges. The light quality is indescribable because of that. Um, everything shimmers, and um, it's just an amazing Mediterranean quality of light, although it's actually, at that point, it's the, we call it the Adriatic Sea. Um, the colors are vivid, um, and it's amazing to be in a city where there is no traffic noise at all, no bikes, no Vespas, no traffic, um, and the, the, <clears throat> every building is beautiful. It's pretty much been the same way for 800 years, and it's mm. just really a special treat. Oh, fabulous! And so, which which art museums do you prefer when you're when you're over in Italy? 
Well, I like all of them. For Renaissance art and um, Florence, the Uffizi Museum is really the greatest museum in the world. Um, and, of course, there's the Academia with the famous statue of David that is just amazing. You come around a corner, and there it is, bigger than life-size, and just it's an amazing thing to see. No picture rep- reproduction does it justice. And then there's several other museums in Florence that I love. And then in Venice, there's another museum also called the Academia that's just chock full of Venetian art, which is really different than the early Renaissance art because it's really about vivid color. Um, Florentine art is much more about line and perspective, and Venetian art is about brilliant colors because they were the first ones to get the pigments from the Orient, so they kept all the best for themselves and then sold to the other artists um, throughout the country and the world. (laughs) Yeah. Fabulous, fabulous amount of information you've shared with us today, Paula. I'm wondering if there's anything that you want to make sure that people who are viewing this uh, video get a chance to hear you say. Is there anything we've left unsaid or anything that you want to make particularly make sure that they're aware of? Well, sure, Zita. Sometimes people um, kind of get worry about a group tour. Is it going to be um, too much hustle and bustle? And frankly, some of them are. Most group tours take 25 or 40 people. Um, but the good thing about a tour, especially ours that only has eight, is everyone means to read up before they come, and they want to study and learn where to go. But hardly anybody has time anymore, and most people end up flipping through a guidebook on the plane. And so when they get there, they don't really know where to go. They have some ideas, but they'll get to the Uffizi, for instance, and it'll be closed that day. Or they'll end up waiting in line. And so with a group tour like ours, you really it takes all that hassle out. The other thing people spend is a great deal of time. Most people spend most of their afternoons trying to figure out where they're going to eat, and it's really hit or miss. And we have really great authentic trattorias that can sit a group of 8 or 10, but they can't take a group of 25. So I want them not to worry so much about the idea of a group tour. We're not on a bus. We're not stopping and eating on the side of the road. We travel by first-class train. And it really just gives you all the benefits of having someone do all the work. Plus, we will customize the trip to make it the trip of your dreams. So, Paula, just in case someone wants to get in touch with you, they've seen the tape, they want to get more information, or they, they want to check in with you about upcoming tours, would you mind sharing with us your website? No, Zita, I'd love to share my website. <laughs> it's www.timeofyourlifetours.net. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Zita. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. And thank you for joining us today on BizTalk with Zita. I hope to see you again very soon. Bye now.